Good afternoon. Dad and I are joining you today for the Pauline Epistles lesson for Wednesday, July the 1st, 2020. Uh, today we will begin a new lesson from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And so uh, just want we welcome you uh, watching this. Uh, we are not going to be able to meet tomorrow night in class because I will be out of state uh, doing a family wedding. And so we will not meet in the classroom tomorrow night, July the 1st, so we're recording it. It will be available later today or tomorrow morning uh, on our website for you to watch. And so we thank you for that. Thank you for, for staying connected, engaging yeah. with yes. the church and with yeah. us. Um, we, we, we know that the live stream and the Facebook post and all these views from the website are, are effective. Uh, <clears throat> we averaged around 85 views mm -hmm. Uh, this last month on all of our, our Wednesday night and Sunday morning services. So thank you for staying connected. I appreciate it very much. Amen. Let me just remind you of a couple of announcements. We are having drive through prayer on Wednesday between 6 and 7 p.m. in the church parking lot. And then Sunday, uh, we will have our uh, service, in-person service at 10 a.m. Okay. There will still not be any uh, Sunday school or children's ministry services at this point. We're still discovering that. As far as we know as of today, we looked and checked the website again today, phase three should begin tomorrow. Uh, so we need to see how that unfolds, what that yes. looks like for a yes. week or two before we make any decisions really about coming back in the building uh, uh, with children's services and that kind of thing. So stay in touch with us. We will be communicating with you about those changes as they come. Uh, we ju we're just asking you to be patient with us uh, as, as we discover a little bit about uh, what's gonna happen through phase uh, two. I mean, phase three, sorry. Um, uh, we want to thank the Lord for uh, answers to prayer. We've had several who've had surgery, Jez Quinn, uh, Donald Page, and others have had surgery. Uh, they did well through the surgery. They're recuperating. We thank the Lord for that. We have others that are in our nursing homes. We have several that are in rehab facilities that had surgery, went to rehab, nursing home, rehab facilities, and then COVID hit. Of course, then they had yeah, to stay. Right. So we just want to lift them up. Um, we, we, have do, we do nursing home ministry in seven different nursing homes, and all of that has been, um, uh, nothing is done for the last 13, 12 to 13 weeks. We've not been able to go into the nursing home. They won't even talk to us until after phase wow. three. Wow. So we have several that are visiting. We have several that are going to the, to the windows, cracking the windows and visiting with those uh, that are able to, to, that are mobile and able to get to the chair or sit in the, by the window. So uh, we thank the Lord that we're able to stay in touch with them. We want to um, pray and ask the Lord's blessing Amen. on uh, the word this evening. We thank you, Father, yes. for the power of your word. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father, for life, for direction. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, for strength, for guidance that it gives to us. Yes. Father, we thank you, Lord, it is daily sustenance. Father, Lord, and that it is food for our souls. Yes. We pray, Father Lord, as we go into mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, a new lesson. Oh, Father. We pray, Father Lord, yes. you give us insight as, yes. in, into Paul. Yes. And Father, some things that he says in this mm -hmm. chapter are not quite mm -hmm. typical for Paul or characteristic for Paul. And yet we, we want to understand the reasons of why he is yes. saying what he's saying. And so, Father, I pray that you give us insight into your word. Yes. And help us, Lord Jesus, to, Amen. to apply it, to walk in it, to give us strategies, Lord, to know when we're challenged, like Paul's yes, being Father. challenged, how we are to defend our, our faith, to defend our reputation in yes. Christ, to defend our ministry. Yes. Give yes. us insight and wisdom, we pray, and we thank you for meeting the needs of your people, Amen. for blessing yes, them, for healing them, yes, restoring Lord. strength yes. in their bodies. Yes. We give you praise. Touch every member of the Pauline Epistles class. Father, Lord, yes. we just pray that you put your hand upon amen, them, amen, bless amen. them, meet their needs. Yes, Father, Father, Lord, I pray over and abundance, yes. Father, Lord, and that we may be able to be blessed, to be a blessing to others, as amen. Pastor Terry says, as we've just concluded from chapters 8 and 9, uh, the ministry of giving. Father, amen. help us, Lord Jesus, to yes. share what we have with others, yes, to bring Hallelujah. others to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, to be a witness to those who are amen, lost. Amen, amen. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen.
All right, so tonight we are starting 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 through chapter 11, verse uh, 33. And we're going to look at, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to look at a defense of the ministry of the Apostle Paul. Paul is going to share in these passages uh, verses that are somewhat, he's going to say some things in these verses that we would not see as characteristic of Paul. Uh, some would even say he's bragging or be, boasting a little bit, and he's going to address that. And he said, if I'm, going to, if I'm forced to boast or forced to brag, then I'm going to I'm going to brag about what God has done, Amen. And not what Amen. I've done. And Amen. so we're, Amen. we're coming into uh, this chapter. We've seen in the book of 2 Corinthians the, that reconciliation is a key word. It is the one word yes. summary of yes. this book between yes. he and the church and congregation right. at, at Corinth. We know, though, that that reconciliation that has already taken place, because we're in chapter 10 now, we know that reconciliation has is, is taken place. However, we also know that it did not eliminate all of the sources of tension that are still somewhat existent in the church. In the last four chapters of the book of 2 Corinthians, Paul presents a very firm defense, maybe somewhat in-your-face kind of defense that's not characteristic of him, uh, of his own ministry. These chapters will consist of a very sharp rebuke, uh, mm -hmm. uh, not of the, the whole Christian community at Corinth, but more of those that Paul described here as we see as false apostles, deceitful workers that are masquerading as apostles of Christ. Now, Paul's very stern. He's preaching. He's yeah. teaching. He's, he's talking very directly, very deliberately. He's choosing his words carefully, but he's letting us know that those that are challenging him here in these passages are false apostles. Yes. They're presenting themselves yes. as apostles of Christ, but he says they're only masquerading. And the reason we know that, and he points this out, and the reason we know they're false apostles is because of their motives and their objectives and the fruit that follows. Does right? this sound familiar? Yes. Yes, it does. So we see that these false apostles had invaded the community of Corinth, and they were sowing seeds of discord among mm -hmm. the Corinthian mm -hmm. Christians there in the church. Amen. Now, <clears throat> the Apostle Paul disputed these troublemongers is what they, he yeah, may yeah. refer to them as troublemongers or troublemakers and, and he, he disputes their claims now he says really the first one is that their claims is that they're servants of righteousness 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 15 uh, says that mockingly called them super apostles so these are real troublemakers, but Paul said, you know, they are claiming to be servants of righteousness, but notice what Paul calls them yeah. in 2 Corinthians yeah. eleven five 5 and chapter 12, verse 11. He calls them these supposed super apostles, okay? So these false apostles were opposing the actual, the gospel yes. of God, yes. the gospel of Christ, yes. the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ, how yeah. Jesus is the Son of God, and he is the only way of salvation uh, with the Father. Amen. And so we Amen. see that they were actually opposing the gospel of God, the truth of Christ, as Paul had been preaching. This is talked about in 11, 7, and 10. And we're going to come back to these passages in more depth in a moment. Precisely what their teaching was is we're not exactly sure, but we know that Paul is in his answers... We don't have uh, written evidence uh, of their teaching, of the false apostles' teaching, right, right. but we know by Paul's answers and his responses that he's dealing with these issues. What you can surmise, yeah. yes. So Paul gave very little information about these false apostles or super apostles beyond the fact that they're Jews. Chapter 12, I mean, chapter 11, verse 22 tells us that these, these were Jewish false teachers presenting themselves as apostles of Christ who were traveling. In another location, in another few slides, you're going to hear us use the word missionary apostles. In other words, they're mimicking the apostle Paul's 
ministry and actions yeah. and titles. Okay. Wow. So we know that Paul, in the book of Acts, did three missionary journeys. He ministered to places. He yes. chose to go yes. to places yes. that had <laughs> never, ever heard the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. I'm getting ahead of myself, but we're going to talk about this later. He says, I chose not to go where others had preached Christ yeah. and go behind them. I chose to go in places where the word of God had never been shared. The message of Christ had not been shared. So now we've got these super apostles, these false apostles, okay. who are travel Jewish traveling missionaries, preachers, who are going in behind Paul and the churches he's established and presenting a false doctrine and we'll go into that in more detail but he says they're Jews they're following me they're causing confusion yes. and basically yes. what they're wanting yes. to do you know where I'm headed they want the they want the believers to have to go back to the legalism of the law correct fulfilling the old testament right. and saying that you're saved by that and not by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ now, they must have claimed to be more Jewish from way, the way Paul presents his answers to these false apostles mm -hmm. is that they're actually claiming to be more Jewish and superior wow. spiritually wow. to the apostle Paul and or to his converts. So yes. see how Paul yes. says they're super apostles? Yes. In other words, they were saying, they were actually teaching and presenting and saying, look at us. Yes. We yes. are super apostles. Yes. Look at us. We have a greater knowledge. We have a greater spirituality. We have a greater understanding than Paul and or even you, and the, the, the converts. And the comparison to that is that Paul, the, the, the uh, accolades and the glory that he gave was not upon himself or exactly. the show was not upon exactly. himself, but to the Lord Jesus Christ. Thus, there is the first clue that these are false apostles because right. they're bringing attention to themselves yes. and not to the Lord Jesus Christ. Correct. That's what I was referring to. Paul is going to end up being forced to brag. Yeah. In order to defend who his ministry and yeah. Christ, he's forced to brag. But you're going to be surprised what he brags about. <laughs> okay. You're going to be surprised what he brags about. It's not what these super apostles are bragging about. Right. So what we see is that they're claiming to be more Jewish. Now remember, who is Paul? He was Saul. He was, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. You got it. He knew right. the law. He knew it inside and out. Yes. He lived all the external stuff. Yes. And he knew that that was all a facade. Yes. So he yes. has... He has actually a greater knowledge because he's been on both sides. Amen. He Amen. has been the, uh, the Pharisee, right. the hypocritical Pharisee, and now he is a saved missionary preacher of the gospel. So these false teachers are claiming that they're Jew more Jewish and they have a superior spirituality than Paul. Mm. Now, it's likely that they prided themselves on keeping the law. Thus, yeah. that's yeah. how they were more Jewish because yeah. they were keeping the Jewish law as Jews, okay? In other words, that would mean that I am a, a greater Jew than you because I'm practicing and you're not. Right. I'm following right. the law right. and you're yeah. not, okay? <laughs> All right, so in other words, they're condemning Paul for his willingness to introduce to the Corinthians. Uh -huh. yeah. Now remember, who are the Corinthians? They're Gentiles. They're right. not Jews. Right. But he is presenting to them uh, the Mosaic law as being essential. Excuse me. They're presenting the Mosaic law yes. as being essential to yes. salvation. Yes. All right. Notice from all indications, the Corinthian agitators, these false apostles, represented a Jewish Christian movement that was determined to make the law indispensable and superior or above the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. My, my, See, my. it's confusing. Yes. If, if yes. there were Jew, Jewish converts, then that would tickle their ear. Mm -hmm. But if you've got Gentile converts that have never known anything about Jewish law, you, a super apostle yes. comes in, yes. sows subtle discord seeds, Correct. All right? Correct. it causes confusion in their mind. Right. Thus, Paul has to deal with that. Now, from Paul's perspective, he says, 
This situation calls for very stern words. So the troublemakers denied Paul's authority and they even questioned his personal integrity and questioned the reliability of his message of reconciliation through faith. Wow. Remember, they're mm. not, they do not adhere to the doctrine of faith in Christ. They adhere as to obedience to the law. Right. So then, the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ has no value to them. So mm. thus they say his message is unreliable. Yeah. Yeah. His message of reconciliation has holes in it because the only way you can be reconciled to God is by obedience to the law. Now, Paul encouraged the pursuit of peace. So how is Paul, if he is a peacemaker, how is he going to address these super apostles? How is he going to combat the false teaching and do so in a peaceful manner? Amen. Notice right, the right. bullet number one. Paul encouraged peace. He said you need to live in harmony with one another in Romans 12, 16. The second bullet, he said, in Ephesians 4, chapter of 4, uh, verse 3, he says, Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Romans 14, 19, third, third bullet. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads Amen. to peace. Amen, yes. Now, yes. Paul did not, hear me clearly, Paul did not push for peace at any price. Did you hear me? Let that sink in. Paul did not push for peace at any price. This, this comes home today. What's going on in our world right Amen. now? Amen. What's going on in our communities, in yes. our cities, across this nation? Yes. Okay? yes. Paul, some, some people are pushing for peace at any price, regardless of moral, ethical value, there you go. the moral code. Right, okay? right. Right. Paul urged the Corinth the Christians in Rome, he said in Romans 16, verse 17, to watch out for those who cause divisions uh -huh. and put obstacles in your way, right. contrary to the teaching you have learned. Right. In other words, he says, keep away from them. Paul told the Romans, mm -hmm. you keep away from those. Yeah. that are going to tickle your ear, that are going mm -hmm. to give you something that's going to cause you to doubt, yeah. that cause division or put obstacles in your Christian walk, the path of your Christian walk. He said, keep away from them. Paul said he would have nothing to do with them right. with the accommodation of error yeah. under the cloak of reconciliation. So you see, mm. these false teachers were coming in under the message of reconciliation. Oh, Lord have mercy. But they were really yes. pushing error, yes. doctrinal yes. error. Okay, So in other words, they were distorting the basic doctrine, Okay, and that doctrine required discipline and, and excuse mm -hmm. me, the distortion required discipline and, and correction because what it was really doing is is in order for there to be unity, you've also got to have purity in faith. Amen. Okay? Amen. And so you've got to, Paul says, I, we have to deal with this. We can't mm -hmm. ignore this. So their distortion, the super apostles' distortion of basic doctrine, required Paul to speak about it. Amen. To give a defense, Amen. to Amen. discipline, yes. and to correct, so that the purity of our faith in Christ will remain essential and that it would keep the unity. Yes. What has Paul just been talking about in all of this chapter, especially chapter 2 through chapter 7? What have we spent all those weeks talking about? The problems of divisions within the church. Right. Okay? Right. He's just restored. There's been reconciliation, and they've restored unity, and now these super apostles are coming in and trying to destroy this, the right. unity that's right. been reestablished. Separation okay? again. Yes. So inevitably, all church controversies fall into two categories, then and now. Yes. Okay? Uh -huh. You've got substantive. Wow. You've got substantive category, which means it's centered in ideas and doctrine. And then you've got interpersonal. So okay. all church problems, difficulties, troubles fall into one of those two categories, either substantive, talking about ideas and doctrine, or interpersonal, in other words, personality clashes. Mm -hmm. The conflict that's reflected here in chapters 10, 11, 12, and 13 
of 2 Corinthians is of the substantive type. In other words, it's dealing with the ideas and doctrine. Okay? Mm -hmm. Paul defended the gospel of grace and he defends his ministry. You see, if you uh, adhere to obedience to the law, then grace is not needed. Yeah. You don't yeah. need grace. You don't need God's grace. You don't need God's son. And so he's defending the gospel of grace as well as his ministry because he's preaching the gospel of grace. Mm -hmm. So in his stern moments, Paul interwove into what he wrote a very disarming humility. Mm -hmm. He's being peaceful. He's being humble about it. But he also expresses a greater, deeper love yes. than what yes. Uh, yes. may be first yes. thought of. Yes. So when, if you understand, you, you, it, it's kind of like this. If, you, if you're a parent and you've got kids, you've had to discipline or correct your kids. Yes. And uh, like my dad had to discipline me when I was a kid. He said, son, this hurts me more than it hurts you. I didn't believe him at the time. Okay? All right? All right? And, and so it, it, it appeared as if uh, I'm the one that's getting the shaft. I'm the one that's getting the pain. Right. And he, you know, you see what I'm saying? So you have to, but I, I, I've come to understand that that was, uh, dad was working in, he was showing love by correction. Yes. Okay. And, and so and that's what the, Paul is doing exactly. here. Exactly. He is correcting, but he's showing his humility. He's showing his love for them. Yes. He's also showing the love of Christ for them. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So I guess another way of saying it is that at times sternness in love is necessary yes. in working through painful and yes. troublesome problems. Yes. Okay. So this is true in Paul's defense of the true gospel. Because, see, the false, doc, the false apostles are presenting a false gospel. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay? Amen. And so he's defending the true gospel, and he's also defending his ministry against these so-called super apostles. Now, point number one. We're, let's, if you have your Bibles, let's turn to chapter 10. I've given you a, an introduction to what's going on. So now let's look at these verses together. And let's read verses 1 through 6. Now I, Paul, appeal to you with the gentleness and kindness of Christ. Remember, talked about that humility? Right. What is that? Right. Gentleness and kindness of Christ. Through, though I realize you think I am timid in person and bold only when I write from afar. Now, in verse 1, he just revealed two accusations by the super apostles against him. Yeah. He says, even though you think I'm timid in person and bold only when I write when I'm far away from you. In other words, mm -hmm. huh, mm -hmm. when you're with us, you're like a little church mouse, but when yeah. you're away, you're like a bold lion. Right. Okay? right. In other words, you're a coward. Right. That's yeah. what he's saying. Yeah. All right, verse 2. Well, I am begging you now so that when I come, I won't have to be bold with those who think we yeah. act from human motives. Yeah. Okay. There's another revelation. Right. Okay. Some of you think I only act out of human motives. In other words, for personal gain. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Verse 4. We are humans, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. Hallelujah. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Okay, another thought. Yes. Another revelation. Yes. The false yes. teachers were saying, obey yes. the law. All right, Paul's saying, no, you obey Christ. Obey Christ, okay. amen. Okay, because Christ is the fulfillment of the law. Right. Okay. And after you have become fully obedient, we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. Okay, so we see in these, these verses 1 through 6, Paul is replying to the charge of being a coward, mm -hmm. of cowardice. Mm -hmm. okay? So word had reached Paul that these certain intruders into the Corinthian church were seeking to sabotage his character and his ministry. In other words, they were coming in, lifting themselves up and yes. tearing down Paul right. and the ministry of Christ. So 
these super apostles sought to build up their own reputations, okay, not by active ministry in the gospel. There you go. Not right. by that, right. but simply by destroying someone right. else's reputation, by right. destroying Paul's yes. reputation yes. as a servant of Christ. So their whole aim was to win for themselves the yes. Corinthians' love. Yes. In other words, they yes. were attempting to steal the love of the Corinthian church by destroying their affection for Paul. Yes. If they can demean and tear down mm -hmm. and destroy Paul, mm -hmm. then they will gain the Corinthians' love. Mm -hmm. Now, nothing would have pleased these false apostles more than for the apostles' person and ministry to have been held in contempt by the yes. Corinthians. Now, what they don't understand and what they don't really know is what we know now because we've already looked at chapters 2 through right. 7 right. through through 8 that dealt with that reconciliation of mm -hmm. problems that had existed. Yes. Okay? yes. So Paul knows that, but they don't necessarily know mm -hmm. that. So they, Paul knows we've just gone through a time of reconciliation, and evidently there's still some troublemakers coming in. Right that are, are attempting it to do it again. So Paul has the knowledge of that. So do the Corinthians. Mm -hmm. They have that mm -hmm. knowledge too. Okay. Now, Paul begins his defense by appealing to the Corinthians on the basis of his meekness and gentleness of Christ. Is Paul coming at them like a, bear, a bull in a china shop? No, indeed. No. no indeed. He's appealing to to the Corinthians to yes. understand who he is. He's a yes. man of peace. Yes. He's a man of Christ. He's a man of gentleness. He's a man of meekness. In other words, a man who is meek and gentle would not lose his temper or grow impatient. Okay. Paul determined to be a Christian while vindicating himself against the charges of his critics. If, if Christ himself showed himself to the apostle or Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus and that powerful conversion took place now the apostle Paul is utilizing that same grace yep. that same spirit that same love yep. now to his hearers yep. as Christ did and and by his example he's yes. teaching the same thing to the Corinthian yes. believers yes so in verse 1 we actually see that there he, he, they say he has no imposing presence. <laughs> Apparently, his the, his opponent said that he he was <laughs> humble in their presence, but only but really just a bully yeah. when he was absent. Yeah. In other words, mm -hmm. you're meek and mild when you're here, but when you're away, you're just a bully. Okay. In other words, um, you're you're harsh and you're hard. Yeah. Okay. All right. In other words, when he was face to face with those who would stand up to him, he was timid, coward, and unimpressive. Okay. But at a distance, in writing your letters, you're bold yes, and you're yes, strong. Yes, okay? yes. All right. So because of this saying concerning Paul began to circulate at Corinth, mm -hmm. he, look at what is said in verse 10. His letters are weighty and forceful, but in person he's unimpressive, and his speaking mm -hmm. amounts to nothing. Now, notice... They, the, the false apostles, are using a lot of pomp and show. Yes. yes. Okay? Yes. And do you see any of that in the life of Paul? No. Is any of that no. shown in Paul's ministry? No. 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 Humility was nothing but cowardice to them. They did not understand humility as a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. They did Amen. not understand humility. Yes. Amen. Humility is not weakness. Amen. Meekness is not weakness. Amen. Okay? Good point. It Good is point. strength under control. Yes. And I, I believe personally Paul had to have help of the Holy Spirit to keep his control. <laughs> okay. All right. So what the false apostles failed to discern is that humility is vital to the service of our humble Savior. Amen. Think about Christ. How did he die? How did he live? Amen. Humbly. Humbly. Right. Right. He, 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 he led a humble life. And he was a servant his entire life. Exactly. He died the death, uh, a, a, a shameful death. Yes. But regarded by many as a, as, as a slave or as a, as a criminal. Right. 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 He did all that. 
because he's humble in who he is. Okay? And these false teachers fail to discern that, uh, and they don't realize, well, of course, they're denying Christ anyway because right. they're back on the law. Right. So Paul's ministry, in con by contrast, Paul's ministry is characterized by the meekness and the gentleness of Christ. Right. In other words, he did not want his Corinthian friends to force him to adopt a different attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul is going to be who Paul is. Yes. Who Paul is in Christ. Let me yeah, redefine there you go. that. There you go. Okay. There you go. So above all, Paul desired to show how a man would live if Christ were living inside of Amen. him. Amen. Okay. Amen. So personal That's the key. Personal impressiveness and magnetism which the super apostles associated with spiritual life okay. were not motivations for Paul's ministry. No. No. Paul wasn't in it to impress anybody. Paul wasn't in it for personal magnetism and to create his own following. Right. Okay. That's what the super apostles were after. They wanted a crowd. They wanted those to follow from city to city. They were to saying, support them. They were saying, look at us. Right. Paul is saying, look at Christ. Look at Christ. Look at Christ. So <clears throat> Paul, where they, were, they wanted to um, operate under these uh, motivations for personal gain, right. Paul right. was eager to follow the example of Christ. Right. In other words, Christ lived this way. Paul's living this way because he's living like Christ lived. Right. Okay? And so basically, what is Paul doing? He's demonstrating... Christ likeness yes. to us and to them. And as Christ was a servant, Paul was a servant. Exactly. So he was not about to take the accusation of his opponents right. lying down. Right, right. Amen. Okay. Amen. Evil and evil men have to be resisted. And this yeah. is what Paul deals with. Wow. The ministry of reconciliation is a spiritual warfare. Yes, it is. But as Paul yes. did, yes. it must be carried out in a spirit of humility. Right. Pride and self-will have no place in this kind of ministry. That's right. The humble servant of God has had his pride and has had his self-will crucified mm. On the cross with wow. Christ. Wow. And the model for his lifestyle is the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Amen. Amen. First and foremost. First and foremost. And I think today, right here, is a good stopping point. Uh, we've gone about 30, 32 minutes. We're and, not done uh, already, are oh, we? No, no, no. This is just a stopping. <laughs> We're just getting started. We've only covered one verse, the introduction and one verse. And, of course, that's how it goes sometimes in our class. But if, 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 I, if I go to the next verse, two verses, it's going to be another 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah. And we, I, don't, I want to respect your time. Yes. Uh, yeah. If you at home watching, you have other things to do. But I do and say I want to, I want to give you a teaser. I want you to understand, and I will ask you to read, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 in its entirety. Next week, we'll pick up with verses 2 and 3. And we're going to talk about how Paul says, look, I'm not guided by worldly standards. Amen. I'm guided Amen. by a spiritual principle, spiritual yes. uh, standards, biblical standards. And so uh, we'll give you a little teaser. This is what we're going to talk about. So in other words, the false teachers, the false apostles, they didn't count vir uh, humility as a virtue. Yeah, yeah. Right? So they called Paul a coward. Yeah. They mistook his meekness for weakness. For weakness. Yes. And next yes. week, we'll yes. unpack that. Okay. All right. The Lord bless you. Have a great week. God bless.